live on YouTube. Welcome to the hood table where we chop up local and globally been spoken. You don't really want to miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little, get that wine in your system for your glass a little. Expose current events, talk trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. Be addicted to the content, got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want to invite a message. Friends watching in the house and your job parking lot before you clock in. I don't want to miss a second of this HD content. Everybody think they got something to say, so it's an open invitation. Bring it to the table. But if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in. We gon' probably turn it back until you start trying again. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix. You don't need cable. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix. You don't need cable. Hey, <laughs> what's going on? What's up, Prime Time Squad and my the hood table squad? How are you guys doing? And happy Monday. I hope everybody is having a wonderful, blessed start to their week, as I am. <laughs> and we about to get right into this sister's review. We are now on season one, episode 18, and the title of the show was called Bugaboo. So let's get right back in. And also, if you guys watch the show, if you've been keeping up with the show, feel free to comment in the chat. Let me know about uh, how you feel about any of the certain characters in the show or let me know um how do you feel about you know anything that's going on with the show so feel free feel free to comment in the chat make sure you thumbs up the video give us a thumbs up because it's very important for analytics and let me um silence my phone before i get into this everybody is going live right now but anyway do not disturb <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to be reviewing Sister Season 1, Episode 18. And last episode, um, at the end of last episode, we had saw actually how Andy, you know, she was being attacked by that dude, Morris, the attorney who had, was trying to come on to her and was trying to hook up with her in the bathroom, basically trying to blackmail her. If she don't give him the cookies, then he was going to make sure that she, for one, um, loses her, uh, get barred, you know, disbarred from, you know, being a lawyer. And also her firm was going to have to pay all those millions of dollars in that settlement. So he wanted her to, you know, get him the cookies and come work for him. But anywho, she tricked him. He went to the bathroom. She ran to her car. Next thing you know, he was up in her car trying to attack her. And out of nowhere, here comes Gary. I'm like, where the heck? How did <laughs> where he come from? Should he be somewhere with Jasmine trying to smooth that thing over? But anyway, he showed up, thank God, in a nick of time. He was able to get Morris off of Andy and Molly whopped him all in that parking garage. But but I was still like, how the heck he find out where she was? Man, that investigator the gay lady the black gay lady who actually had tried to come on to andy as well she didn't put a tracker on andy's car then gary didn't turn around and put a tracker on the investigator's car so that's how he knew that the investigator was following andy so he started following the <laughs> he started following the investigator found out where she was and saved her in the nick of time because ain't no telling what would have happened if he wouldn't have been there to molly whop old morris and he was about to bust his head to the white meat with that brick if andy wouldn't have begged him to stop <laughs> so morris he even he more mad now he big mad morris is mo mad talking about um just wait until he tells gary's wife what had happened so i'm sure he's gonna tell her some kind of you know concoct some kind of story why he got his butt whipped without telling her the truth i'm sure that's what's gonna happen but anyway uh while driving you know away to away from the scene gary is up there you know telling andy hurry up pull over drop him off because of the fact that the investigator was tracking andy's car so she didn't ditch him before the investigator catch up and catch them two together and have more proof that they still seeing each other but did y'all hear how Andy was referring to him? She was like, baby, 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 baby. I'm like, hold up, Andy. I thought you was done with old Gary. You done told him to go back to his wife because you don't want to be this bard. You don't want your law firm sued. What's really going on? I'm like, is she still trying to be with Gary? 
I don't know. I know the feelings still there. I know the feelings are there, but dang, I was like, she was like, baby, baby, baby. He's like, baby. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Them two is gonna get in a heap of trouble if they keep messing around with each other. But um, anywho, anyway, Zach, Zach, let's talk about Zach and Karen. Poor old Zach. He then came over to Karen's house. I don't know how many times thus far since this show started that he's actually apologized to Karen. So he's up there um, trying to, you know, make good with Karen. He then brought over a peace offering in the form of a small plant um, to replace the other plant. And I don't remember what happened to the other plant, but y'all let me know in the chat if y'all remember, because I'm like, did they damage the plant when him and Aaron was fighting and scuffling in her house? I don't know. But anyway, he brought over a plant for her. Um, and although, uh, Helena, his co-worker, had lied about being pregnant by him. He did, you know, confess to her that he had a relationship with Helena. Um, it was a one-night stand, um, but she did not get pregnant. And I that did make Karen feel a little better. But still, overall, this is not the first time he's cheated on her. And Karen, though, when he was telling her, you know what, Karen, we both need to try to do better. We both need to get on the good foot and try to do things better in this relationship. But for some reason, Karen still doesn't think she's doing anything wrong. In her eyes, Zach is all wrong for her. She needs a man more like the dead white lady's husband, Aaron. <laughs> Somebody who listens to her. What else she say? Listens to her, makes her feel safe somebody who has her back when she needs it. And if Zach has to ask her, what does all that mean? Then he is not the one for her. <laughs> then she claims she found the man. He was like, well, I hope you find what you're looking for. She says she did. So does that mean that the man that she found is Aaron? Is she actually going to, you know, get involved with Aaron? You know, as far as in a relationship, I know there's some attraction there, obviously, with Aaron. But again, like I said before, I don't think Aaron was, I don't think Aaron's wife, the one who killed herself in Karen's uh, salon, I don't think she's the only crazy one in that relationship. He has been on Karen ever since they first met, like really on her, always trying to be around her, stalking her, showing up at her house when she tells him not to come. So I think that might be a bad idea bad idea she might need zach for real in the long run but anyway she talking about that's who i want to be with um but as far as her saying you know somebody who listens to me somebody that's there for me you know things like that i wonder if it's more of aaron just being totally different from zach like you know how she always was humiliating zach talking down to him, calling him names. And then when she tried the same thing with Aaron, he quickly put her in her, he put her, in her place and told her up front, I ain't that dude. You ain't going to talk to me like that. You ain't going disre to disrespect me like that. You going to show me some RSE, R-S-P-E-C-T. <laughs> show him respect, put some respect on his name. So maybe it's just that Zach needs to grow a backbone and check Aaron on her ish. Do y'all agree? <laughs> or do y'all think it's something else? Another reason, because that's really why I think she's more interested in Aaron, because he's, I don't know, maybe more masculine than Zach is. Mm, y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all let me know. But then um, when uh, Andy had actually came over, I was thinking, is Zach trying to prove himself? Trying to prove that he can be dependable or reliable or, you know, good for something? Because when Andy asked her to take her to the hospital after, you know, she told her she was attacked by Morris, Zach was like, I'm coming with y'all too. Karen, nope, nope, Zach, you stay here. Stay right here. He's like, I'm coming, Karen. <laughs> He wasn't about to back down on that one. He actually stood up and stood his ground and said, I'm coming. So I don't know. I think he's already trying to prove himself and prove that he's, you know, trying to do things the right way. And on top of that, why do y'all think he left the room? I mean, why do y'all think he waited till she left the room for him to sit there and answer her questions? Like he actually prove that and showed that he do be listening to her all the questions she had asked after she left the room he was answering them like every single question 
he does be listening. But I think it's, again, more of she's always talking down on him and humiliating him and belittling him. And I just think he needs to grow another set of balls, grow a backbone or something. That's what I think he needs. I don't really think that she needs to mess around with that hearing. But anywho, anywho, what did y'all think about that female officer, the law? <laughs> <laughs> that black cop that was outside the hospital when Zach was out there smoking. At first I was thinking, isn't that one very rude and nasty female officer trying to abuse her authority over him smoking in the wrong section of the hospital? But come to find out, she was just messing around with him and yanking his leg <laughs> because of how he treated her back in high school. I Evidently, they didn't want the high school Back in the day, she hooked up with him. He hit it and quit it. He never called, never uh tried to hook up her again, just basically hit it and quit it. And, you know, it was a one-night stand, and he went on about his business. And I guess all this time, all this time later, she's still been holding on to that and upset about it. Like, this cop was really in her fee-fees. She out there giving him grief, talking about you out here smoking in the room, and you littering, you done threw the butt down on the ground, put your hands behind your back. <laughs> he was like, dang, all I did was smoke a cigarette, my man, I'll go to the right section of the hospital. But anyway, anyway, I'm like, you mean to tell me after all this darn time has passed, she's still in her fee-fees? But um, he was acting like he wanted to give her another shot or give them another shot of, you know, what they didn't really have back in the day. And she obviously feels the same way, either that or she's crazy. And again, like I said before, there is quite a few people in this show who I deem absolutely crazy or missing something up there. She might be one of them. She's talking about she still feels the same way about him, even though he hit it and quit it. Back in the day, he smashed it, smashed and passed. You know how they got smashed and passed? And uh, bounce. And she never saw him or heard from him again. But she talking about she still feels the same way that she felt about him back in the day. So I don't know. I don't know. But old Zach trying to get here in cuz talking about, I've been a bad boy. I've been a real bad boy. <laughs> but you know what I foresee happening? And you know, <laughs> it probably won't. But wouldn't it be funny if she got him all alone at her house, got him in bed, they hook up, then she handcuffed him to the bed, and then she leaves his butt laying there in the bed, no clothes on, butt stocking naked for payback. <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> I mean, she does look petty like that. So I don't know. I think she's, I, I don't know. I think she's up to something, but we shall see. But anyway, Morris and Gary's wife, uh, Morris and Gary's wife, Jasmine, they showed up at the same ER where Andy is being treated. And I'm like, why is Jazz? visiting Morris at the hospital. And did y'all see how she was plucking something from out of his beard? Like he had, I don't know, a little cotton. He had something, maybe some grass or something from getting molly walk, you know, back at the uh, club. But anyway, she was up there picking stuff out of his beard and holding on to him and caressing him. And then she took some tissue, wiping up all his blood off his, I mean, she was doing a bit too much for me, she, acting really, really concerned about her attorney like that was her man. And then at the same time, you know, concerned with what Andy might possibly be doing with her real man. I'm like, she up there catering to him and stuff like that's really her dude. But anyway, I'm feeling compelled to believe that it might be a little more going on with the attorney and with his... <laughs> with Gary's wife, Jazz. I don't know that attorney client privilege. I don't know. They got privileges. All right. That's what I'm believing. But anywho, thankfully, Zach was on his toes and acting a little smarter than what he seems to act most of the time and realized that Jack, who realized who Jazz and Morris was and then alerted Karen to alert Andy that they were both in the ER lobby so they can try to find some alternative escape route or escape plan. So we're going to see how that's going to work out next episode. But then Miss Little Sabrina, Miss Little Sabrina, hmm, 
She's still soaking over Calvin. She's laid up in bed while watching reruns of Medea <laughs> and throwing down on a box of chocolate. <laughs> Until Maurice tossed her into going to the drag show later that night. Now, she's still not comfortable or wasn't comfortable with the fact that Maurice is going out with Alonzo. You know, the guy from the bank who was interested in her. Then she gave him Maurice's phone number as a joke for payback, you know, with Maurice. But then, you know, Maurice and him hollered at each other. The man tried to get Maurice to come over to his house. Then Maurice, you know, was like, well, let's meet at the, you know, meet at the club for the drag show. So I was kind of wondering, like, what's really going on with this Alonso? Like, Sabrina wasn't feeling real good about this situation. She kept telling Maurice, make sure you call me when you get back. Make sure you hit me up on the phone. And he's like, I'm good. I'm a grown man. I know what I'm doing, whatever. Don't worry about me. But I think he should have listened to old Sabrina. <laughs> he should have listened. To, did y'all see that man pull up on Maurice and start going off on him about him being gay? I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, I thought he was just a cheetah when he was trying to holler at Sabrina. But then I'm like, maybe he's a bisexual cheetah since he then tried to holler at Maurice. Then I was like, well, maybe he's a fluid cheetah and just, you know, flows any way he wants to, whichever direction he wants to. Then I was like, well, maybe he's a down low cheater because of the way he was going off on Maurice. I was like, oh my God, so disrespectful. And I'm telling you, I, at first, <laughs> at first, when I saw him swing on Maurice, I thought he was about to whoop Maurice, but but I saw Maurice tagging that man. I mean, it was kind of hard to see because Maurice's big old blonde wig was flying all over the place and shaking all over the place. I was like, dang, who hit who? But if I'm correct, it looked like Maurice was giving it to him, looked like he was just, uh, uh, just tagging him. And that wig just flying all over the place. I was like, oh, see, he done thought he was just going to whoop on a gay man. Like, like Maurice is a punk. Like, Maurice is weak. I think that's what he thought. But Maurice was like, uh-uh. Hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> he was getting in that man's cheeks. I was like, oh, shoot, Maurice. I see you, boo. I see you. So I cannot wait till next week to find out who won that fight. <laughs> Who y'all think won? Because I'm telling y'all, it looked like Maurice was giving it to him. But again, that wig was all over the place. I was like, who, 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 who? But anywho, anywho, back to Sabrina. Now, when she went to the drag show, I'm sure she probably expected that she might see Javier there. But I'm pretty sure she didn't think or expect to see Calvin, a.k.a. Pretty Ricky, which is his stage name, <laughs> there singing on the stage, performing for a club full of gay men. And then he dedicated the song to the man that he loves. Who Sabrina was like, child. <laughs> At first, she was going to stay in the club, but she was like, uh -uh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm like, and he wonders why Sabrina is confused as heck. And 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 I'm not trying to say that she should still be judging him or anything like that, like she was before because of his feminine side. But now I'm like, dang, <laughs> He can't, he can't be that mad at her for being suspect. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he dressed kind of feminine. He acts kind of feminine. He likes to get done up, you know, with the same toys that she used. And he likes it, you know. I mean, where some guys don't like it put at, you know what I'm saying? But that is his feminine side, I suppose. But he can't be mad at her for just being like, okay, is this dude gay? Is he bi? Is he not? I really think they need to have another serious discussion. And if she's not cool with all this, especially with using her toys on him, back there like he likes then i think she really needs to move on and find somebody who's maybe not so uh feminine a little more masculine but anywho anywho danny 
Danny and the cowboy, who isn't really a cowboy. I, I believe that's what he said. He he isn't really a cowboy per se. But anyway, that man is fine as hell. Danny was kind of upset because he came over without um her texting him back. I mean, Sabrina is the one who sent him the text messages and pretended to be Danny, invited him over to her house. But I don't care. That man can come over whenever he want, any time of the day he want, without knocking. I'm going to get him a key. That white man is fine. <laughs> he is fun. And then she had the nurse ask him to strip down to nothing but an apron to cook for her. He was like, but I got steaks. The same steaks that you had at the store the other day. She was like, oh, you got steaks? <laughs> so he come in. She let him in with his steaks and everything. I'm like, he can come over anytime he wants. And cook me some steaks and eggs or steaks and whatever he had in that bag. Because that man is just gorgeous. I'm like, is he a model? I really need to look him up. because and he could definitely be like an underwear model or something like that. Because, pff, child, anyway. Anyway, he coming over there with the groceries. I'm like, Nicki Minaj, eat the groceries. But anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> He is really, really cute. He is cute. And I think they would make a really cute couple. As, you know, as soon as Danny starts to just relax and just enjoy the moment. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think about any of these couples. Let me know how you feel. Definitely about Andy and Gary. Um, let me know how you feel about uh, <laughs> Maurice. And that dude, do y'all think that Maurice won that fight? Do y'all think Alonzo won that fight? And let me know what you think about Zach and Karen. Um, I, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. And also um, about uh, Sabrina and Calvin. Do y'all think that she should actually give him a chance and just kind of like ignore all those things, those feminine ways about him if she really likes him? Anyway. Y'all let me know. Let me know. Now, the new episode comes on on the 13th, which is a few days. I know I was a little late with this episode because I had a lot going on with other shows and interviews that I've been doing. But anywho, y'all, make sure if y'all haven't watched um, this show, make sure you watch this show before the next show comes on in a few days so you can be caught all up and so you can join me for the review. And in the meantime and in between time, as usual, Primetime Squad and the Hood Table Squad, stay safe. Be blessed. And I'm out. Deuces.